Hey there, and welcome to my quick tutorial on how to use SVR, otherwise known as Source Video Renderer by Crashfort. So this is just going to be a super quick tutorial on how to pretty much render demo clips with like high quality motion blur, use a velocity counter. It's really great for B-Hop, Surf, KZ, pretty much any sort of like source movement game. I mean, heck, you can even make them for montages and stuff too for comp. I mean, it works with that. So first thing you want to do, go to this GitHub page right here. I'll have the link in the description below. Um, over on the right hand side it says releases the current latest release is SVR 39 so we're just gonna click on that and right here at the bottom where it says SVR zip we're gonna download that so open our folder drag that to our desktop and we can just get rid of this now this is a zipped folder so you gotta make sure you have WinRAR or 7-zip downloaded I recommend 7-zip it's free it's great it's wonderful just uh, right click your zip folder 7-zip extract here I have it already on my desktop so I have to do it again this will just replace all my files so right here at the bottom we can just get rid of the zip and then um, here it is this is SVR it's just a folder so all we want to do is set our config settings and I'll explain each one of what they do so you can set them to like what you think you want but um, go to data go to profiles and then there's a default one you can make another config file you can just copy and paste this one right and then just name it something else and then whenever you like start your movie to like record the demo you just have to make sure you put the name of the profile but if you don't put a name of the profile it just uses this default one now this is really important if you decide to update this later and there's like a later version of SVR out if you update it it overrides all your default settings so maybe make a backup of this somewhere you know so I just use the default because I don't, I don't really care about using any other thing I'm not gonna have different profiles or anything so this is the frame rate that your movie is going to be output in. I just use 60 because, you know, 60 is great. YouTube supports 60. Why not? You can use 30, 24, whatever the heck you want to use. Um, video encoder, leave this alone. You want lib x264. Now, video x264 CRF, this is pretty important. This is kind of like the quality. Um, the lower the number, like it says right here, a lower value means better quality but larger file size. So if you have, a, like, a real big issue with, like, you know, like, file sizes being way too high and your upload is just like really slow you know maybe maybe you just get like lower quality but i use two because i think two is great zero is lossless but uh, you don't need lossless for this especially with motion blur it just looks good anyway i, I think two is honestly what i found to be the best quality i did a bunch of tests um video to x264 preset uh this is gonna be pretty important i like to use medium the slower here's all your presets right here you got like ultra fast super fast very fast faster fast medium slow slower very slow placebo the slower you go in the scale the longer it takes to record each and every like like the whole video pretty much but it comes out much higher quality so like medium is what i've found to be the best balance between like speed and quality and it, it's just really smooth like i think medium looks really really smooth i even fast it's a little jittery and there's some like little skips here and there but i, I don't know medium just seems to be perfect so i set this to medium um this is going to make sure that it captures everything only consisting only in keyframes right so i like this i think it's great it, it makes the quality of the video honestly way higher but the the file size is just like way bigger too like you know it could go from like 90 megabytes to like 500 or something you know it's it's a lot bigger but you know if you're putting this into a uh, video editing software afterward the actual output in the video editing software is what your file size is going to be at the end of things before you upload so just remember that um, motion blur you know motion blur I mean that's one of the biggest reasons I love SVR I, I just learned how to use it it's freaking awesome in like source videos and clips and like it, it's great for like comp and just like anything with high action high motion so we're like moving left and right so strafes and b-hop uh, KZ when you're strafing back and forth, hex surf whenever you're just like going crazy spirals and doing shit, you know, motion blur looks awesome. So we're going to set that to one to enable motion blur, motion blur FPS multiplier. So there is a, like a calculation done here where your FPS is multiplied by this uh, multiplier right here to get how many samples per second, right? So the higher the number of samples, the higher quality the blending is for the motion blur. That's what it is. And then down here, the motion blur exposure, this is uh, done with how many samples it has to have the length of the trail. So if you have 0.5, you know, it's like a medium like trail of motion blur and everything. But like if, the higher the value, the, the bigger the trail is. So this works with the sampling value to get higher quality and longer trail. If you don't want like a shorter trail in the motion blur, so it's just like, you know, it's there, but it's not as like 
there's not like a ghost trail of blur behind it. Um, set this to a lower value, but if you want a higher one, you can set it to like 0.75 or 0.9 or something, anything below one, you know? So, yeah, I, I, I leave this a default. I think 60 multiplier with 60 FPS is perfect. If you're using like 30 FPS, maybe set this to 90 to get some sort of like the same effect, you know? Um, I like 0.5 motion blur. 0.75 also looks pretty sleek or uh, slick too. Okay, so now onto this. This is the velocity overlay. This is going to be the units, you know, like when you're surfing, you got like a, your unit counter. Yeah, this is uh, what displays it on the video. So I like to enable that. I mean, if you're, you know, just doing a comp game or something and you're trying to make a video about that, you probably don't want a velocity counter. That would just be weird. Um, you're going to have your v font for the velocity counter. I have one that I like called Technical Founded VP. And if you don't know what your fonts are in your system and you just have them like installed, but you don't even know what the name of one is, like the exact name you need to type in because you do need to have the exact name for it to work. Just go in your like a uh, little search bar and type in font settings. Click on this here. And then this will actually show you the names of all your fonts, right? It's awesome. So like the default was Arial, but you know, there's all these sub fonts in these fonts so that you can kind of like mess around with it. But the one I'm using, is right here technical round of vp so like this is the name this blue name right here this is what you want to put into this box exactly i don't know if capitalization matters but probably not but i use technical round of vp even though the actual font whenever it shows up in like word or uh paint on net or photoshop or anything is actually thin oblique this is the actual name of the family so this is what you want to put in so then you can set your font size for um this i i use 75 for mine this is the RGB color of the text. So like 255, 255, 255, that's just white. And then 000 is black. So um, this is a border right here. I, I like to just keep it white. I was gonna do purple, but it just did not look good. Um, this is gonna be the border. It goes from the outermost edge of the text, whatever the font is, and then it moves inward to make the border. It does not move outward. So if you have a very thin font, maybe don't use a border or just make it one border size. You know, if you have a really thick font, it's a lot easier to work with because you have way more like, you know, pixels. So it moves in from the outside edge toward the inside. So I, I just keep a border on for one because in a white background with a white text, you're not going to be able to see the velocity counter. But if you have a, just a, a just small black border around it, it looks good. And then you can actually see it in like white surfaces. So I use white, black border with this. If you want to... Um, there's, there's like websites where you can like look up RGB codes to find the exact colors you want you can put in here so I mean that's pretty nice um, this is what like it's gonna be like italic or extra italic I like to just use normal because screw italic <laughs> uh, down here you have your kind of like the weight of the font you can have thin extra light light semi light normal medium semi bold bold you can read you know it's right here I just like to use normal I don't really like messing with any of that stuff, but I mean, you can you can screw it around and like kind of find what you like. Uh, this is where it's the velocity counter is going to be displayed on the screen. So at first I, I was like a little confused, but then I understood it. Um, the first number and the second number are the first word and the second word in the sentence. So a positive value will increase to the right and down. So if it's a positive number, the left number, which is the left word, will increase it to the right. And the and this is percentage, so it's like the eighty percent or like eighty percent to the right of the screen, right? So a positive number on the left will move the velocity counter to the right, and a positive number on the right number will actually move the velocity counter down. So to put it in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen where I want it, I set this. See, it says a negative value will increase it to the left is the left number, and up is the right number if they're negative. So I use negative ninety which will put it in the so negative on the left number. That'll move it to the left side of the screen, the 90 percentile. And then um, the right number, I like to use 95. So to put it in the bottom left corner. So that's in the 95 percentile. You know, you don't want it too close to the edge of the screen because if you get a bigger velocity number, like if you get in the 10,000s or something crazy somehow, <laughs> you get that like max velocity uncapped, you know, it might cut off the screen. But like, you can go somewhere between 90, 92, somewhere in there for a negative. 
on the left number and then that, that that'll put it like right here in the bottom left hand corner it's pretty good or if you want to go in the bottom right hand corner i mean you just kind of like look at the values and then change it uh enable audio i like to have that off because sometimes some surf maps have audio things that are going on in there and it's like you don't need it you don't need audio you're probably just going to have like some clip and throw music over it and then you're good i mean every surfer does that so that's pretty much it for the settings. I mean, I hope I explained it all well so you understand what all this is. And if you need to change anything, you can. So once we're done with that, just make sure you go up to file, hit save. And then you are pretty much done. That's that's about it. So now you have to make sure you have your demos recorded. I'll have a complete separate video on how to record demos manually if you don't know how to do that. So we're just going to use SVR Launcher. Just double click it. And then it scans your games in your Steam to see what games are like available. So you got Counter-Strike Source is one, Counter-Strike Global Offensive is two, and Team Fortress 2 is three. So I'm doing my stuff for CSGO for my surf servers and everything, obviously SCEN. So we're just gonna hit two to start Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This is launches it in SVLAN, or like it uses the code SVLAN on launch, so it's not gonna be like online or anything. You won't get VAC banned for this. Um, it's just, it's gonna give you this Valve anti-cheat message and it's gonna, your console's gonna pop up immediately. Just Close your console. This is just telling you, like, oh, you have the insecure flag and you're, like, you know, you're not able to join VAC secured servers, which you don't really need to. So, fix it to that. Open up your console and type in demo UI. No space. This will bring up your demo uh, recorder over here. Or not recorder, but, like, the, uh, the player. Hit load and then find your demo. If you manually record it, like I'm going to show in my tutorial for the other video, um, they should just be in your CSGO folder. It'll be in like the common Counter-Strike Global Offensive and then the actual folder called CSGO. They'll just be right in there. So I have these ones I was making for like uh, Snowy's record on here. Snowy Surf Peruna dot demo, right? So you just want to double click that. So what you want to do right whenever you get in here, you want to wait until it says about match starting one because there's like a warm up starting whenever you like create your own manual demos. And that means the replay is about to start like for the bot over again so now that we have it paused here we want to open our console and then I have a config called movie made that um, activates a couple commands to like get rid of the hands like the view model it gets rid of the HUD and then it gets rid of the player models so like if the bot if there's a different bot somewhere in the demo it'll just not draw it so I execute that I actually don't have the bot one in here so it's just R underscore draw players zero and that'll make it so the bot isn't shown at all, like if there's a separate bot, like for bonuses or something, or stages. And then um, I'll have this uh, config in the description below that you can just download. It'll be pretty easy. Um, so then, actually, the only thing you have to do left is type start movie, right? And then um, the name of the movie. So, like, like the, uh, the actual output video name, that's what you need to put. Not, you don't have to put the demo name or anything weird. So, start movie, I'm going to put snowy underscore surf underscore Peruna. You don't want to have any spaces in there. You need underscores. So, start movie that, and then I'm going to hit enter, get rid of the console, hit resume, and then hit the X. So, this is done completely in this, like, slow motion weird thing. See, that's where it set, the mat, like, the warm-up ended, so it restarted, and the spec bot is at the start. Or, like, if you're making comp videos or something, you just want to start it from the very, like, beginning of where you want to have the clip, you know? And then... That's it. That's honestly it. So we're just going to sit here and uh, wait for this. I'll just speed it up for you guys and like skip to the end of it. But this does this in slow motion with the settings we have. And it takes a bit to record, but the actual quality of the video is really high and it looks great. So I will jump to the end of this whenever this is done recording for the full map. And then I'll show you how to end your movie. It's so right here. Snowy just landed in the end zone. He's completely done. So we're going to end our movie. All you got to do is... I, I like to wait until like the replay bot starts over. This is at least for surfing. For everything else, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. But wait till the replay bot resets, and then we go end movie, and that's it. You hit enter, and then it ends it, and then it goes back to like normal speed. So you can just exit out of this, and exit out of this, and then if you go back in your folder for SVR, all you have to do is go to movies, and there it is, right there. I had a other one that I just made that was like bad. Um, so, Snowy Surf Peruna. That's what we typed in for when we said start movie. So, if you look at it, and it's on my other monitor, here's the final result. It's got a little speed count in the bottom left, 
and it's got high quality motion blur looks pretty smooth and honestly it's just really solid so i mean yeah that's it it's pretty simple the old svr i don't think was this simple and it was like a little more complicated but i mean yeah they worked out the bugs and now it's like it's just really easy to use so as long as you know how to make a demo which i'll make a separate video for i mean yeah that's that's it so hope i could help you out and uh, have a nice day go surf or something